Hello, welcome to Windrush Wargamers. I'm Joe, and today I will be showcasing my Angmar army. It's my favourite evil faction. So, firstly, I just want to give a shout out to Gary Lynn, who is the uh, terrain maker who built all this lovely Angmar terrain. He built, builds uh, bespoke uh, terrain of fantasy and science fiction and all that kind of jazz. So, I'll put a link in the description. He's really talented, so check him out. So we'll begin, shall we, with the big green thing. So that's my that's my Twilight Ringwraith conversion. So I think a couple of times in the films we're deprived of seeing a Ringwraith, a Twilight Ringwraith on Felby. So I just always thought it'd be fascinating to see what that would look like. What I did was I took the Twilight Ringwraith sprue and I used what I think is the Witch King, and then I just did a simple head swap with a Twilight Ringwraith and just painted him all ghostly and then sort of mounted him on a bit of ruin looking down. The only thing I would change is probably the tail. The wings are actually Balrog wings which I had spare. So, so basically I use him as you know a proxy for the Witch King of Angmar or the Tainted or the Dwimmer Lake mounted. It just looks fun and you know gives it a kind of unique feel to the force. And here are the the other two ring wraiths, so the, the ones I didn't decapitate. And so now we go into the named ring wraiths. Uh, we'll start with the Witch King. I really love the sculpt, the fine cast of the uh, mounted version. I just think it's lovely. And I, I'm not crazy about the foot model. I didn't really like the flail. So I took a sword from a Morgul Knight and just model some green stuff and I think it looks cool even though on reflection I've actually got the flames going the wrong way because the wind would be taking it the other way if you look at his cape but look at his cloak but um yeah it's not the end of the world the tainted I love this model and I'm so glad with the new rules that they made him better because it wasn't quite befitting a model so cool so I'm glad to actually use him in play a bit more which is cool and then the Dwimmer Lake he it's probably been used, for me, he's probably been used a lot less uh, than I would like to. I think he's he's actually gotten a lot worse it's this iteration of the game, but still a very cool model. I love all these guys. Next, it's probably my favourite model in this range. It's Gulliver. And, you know, I, I wanted to do something a bit different from uh, GW paint scheme. It's, it's a very cool paint scheme but I just think I just think all black wings would have been cooler. I think this would make him much more sinister. But as a result I had a problem. You see he's black, the stone he's standing on is grey and the snow is white. It's very monotone, very boring. Even a little bit of you know blood for the blood got in his mouth doesn't really do him justice so it's meant to be a Rohan guy because from the Wild War, War Chieftain but I'm using him as a kind of ranger of the north that's met an untimely demise at the hands of our friend Gulliver and so you know he's got the scratches and he's got the you know the the wound in his neck and there's blood pouring on the snow it's very cool I think you know these larger sized bases really give the opportunity to have a quite a cinematic feel it gives them color you know now you've got brown and green and red and flesh tones and it, it kind of draw your eyes to it and moving down in sort of scale now and power scale we'll go into the Barrow Whites I love these guys, um, both visually and in terms of their gameplay. I just love the, the Paralyzed Special Rule. They personify Angmar more so than the, the Ring Race, I think, it is. And, and I love playing with them. So, you know, with these, nothing special. You know, uh, blues and metallics and very heavy dry brush to kind of give them a ghostly look, and that's really about it. Dead Marsh Spectres, again, very synonymous with Angmar. And it gives you a chance to, obviously there's three different races, there's an, uh, an elf, an orc, and uh, a man of Numenor, so it gives you a chance to kind of get a few more cars in and do different, a few different things and techniques. And I wanted them to kind of look like they were walking out of a frozen marsh, hence the large snow-covered bushes and, and whatnot. 
So, moving on to my next spirit, it's the Dreaded Shade. Now, I actually haven't used this one since the uh, Middle Earth Strategy Battle game came out. Uh, since last time, it's received a bit of a nerf, but I still like it. I really want to play with it again one day. Um, I guess a lot of hate this miniature, but I actually honestly don't mind it too much. So, nothing special here, just a green spirit, really. Uh, sprayed white, washed, and then dry brushed white. So one of my favourite things to do in this hobby is to make thematic objective markers for uh, every army and the ones I've chosen for the Angmar is the Paralyzed Hobbits. Uh, it's quite thematic and like with the tri Twilight Ring Wraiths, it gives models that would never really see the light of day apart from maybe in a display case or uh, in some kind of diorama, it means you can play with them. You know, they're on the tabletop, they're there, they they give some more immersion. So I really like that. So, moving on from the spirits, we're going to go into the orcs now. And the only thing to notice really about orcs is that I wasn't really a fan of their shields. I felt like they were a bit boring. And so I press molded uh, all of the Morgul Knight shields and use those instead and I think they look so much cooler, it gives them a really unique look, they're kind of a kite shield but with a kind of gothic style and they kind of give the orcs like quite a unique kind of feel. Their skin tones I went for a very pale kind of look so you know uh, started out with white and then we do a few washes and then a few highlights just to kind of make them look very pale and washed out to make them different from their kind of southern counterparts make them look like they're from Angmar Oh yes, I almost forgot about this guys, this is the banner bearer. I did a bit of freehand work on the the banner there, just painted a kind of what I think is quite an abstract look at the Witch King of Angmar's uh, notorious helmet. On the back you have his flaming sword. And so, we're going to transition from the orcs into the big brutes of the, the army, the cave trolls. Um, led by Birda of course, the big Mac Daddy, what a legend. So. Cave Trolls are interesting, I, I really like littering them across the field, it, you know, it, then you can be kind of opportunistic with how you use them, so either as a troop killer or a paralysed hero killer, um, really effective. I like to put one per warband, so I have about 10 orcs, 5 with shield, 5 with spear and shield, and then what I'll do is I'll thr throw a dead marsh spectre and a cave troll in there as well, and then you've got... A really, a really versatile warband actually that can deal with a lot of stuff. He just kind of exudes power, doesn't he? And rage. So he's great. I like the and I love that they've given him a pick in this new in the new rules actually. Or the latest rules I should say. He really kind of shows off that kind of hill troll vibe, which supposedly these guys are instead of cave trolls. Thank you for watching and putting up with my my cold. Uh, my name's Joe, we, I'm, I'm making this channel with my brother, we're just kind of trying to get more into the kind of community side of, of the hobby, and if you've enjoyed it, please you know, leave a comment or, or like and subscribe because there will be more stuff coming, as I say, especially with Middle Earth, but we'd like to venture into some new games as well, and so we'll probably do the next army showcase I'd imagine would be Erebor, well, the army of Thrall, so stay tuned for that one.